be quiet. So, <laughs> let's move on. We have yeah. light now. Yep. Good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> To everyone who is going to be joining this session, welcome uh, to the making of Pralaya, a conversation with um, Dr. I. Vayan Dibia and Lata Pada. Mm -hmm. uh, please uh, allow us a few moments. We're just going to wait for a few more people to join, and then I will introduce Pralaya and the speakers. Thank you. Akila, if you pronounce my, my, my name, just uh, say the first word is Iwayan. Iwayan. Yeah. It's not Iwayan. Iwayan. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have a whole bunch of people watching already. So a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Ivan Dibia and Lata Padaji. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate the two of you taking time off to be in conversation with me. Um, uh, actually, the, uh, you know, the idea for this conversation came from a beautiful post that Lata Padaji had shared on her Facebook, uh, you know, speaking about her fantastic collaboration with you. Mm -hmm. And it's really a privilege to be uh, able to um, have this conversation with two amazing artists um, and, to be speak and to be able to speak about the making of Pralaya, a fantastic mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we actually play the promo of Pralaya, just to type, sort of set the context, allow me to introduce the production and its premise to all of you. Pralaya is a production by Sampradaya Dance Creations award-winning artistic director Lata Pada in collaboration with scholar, dancer, choreographer, Dr. E. Vayan Dibia. Mm -hmm. In its premise, it is a contemplation of humanity's propensity to push mm -hmm. to the brink of extinction. Mm -hmm. In its unfolding, it is the confluence of Indian and Balinese performing arts, yes. celebrating the eternal importance of the Mahabharata in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Performed by a brilliant cast of 10, including Dr. E. Van Dibia and Lata Pada herself. Mm -hmm. The music scored by Praveen D. Rao mm -hmm. also features master musicians from Bali mm -hmm. and India. Mm -hmm. It is the contemporary resonance of the Mahabharata brought to the stage in a dance theater format mm -hmm. in a very bold, sensitive and stunning manner. Mm -hmm. Universal and timeless, Pralaya tells a tale of dynastic conflict, of earth shattering chaos, Mm -hmm. And finally, an abiding calm, mm -hmm. simmering with the potential of being shattered again. Mm -hmm. um, it's also our privilege uh, to have with us Dr. E. Vayan Dibia, who was awarded the Padma Shri this year by oh. the government of India for his immense contribution to dance. Thank you. It's really a privilege, uh, Dr. Dibia, to be able to speak this. And Lataji, I have only you to thank for enabling this. Mm. Really appreciate that. Uh, before I introduce the artist, I thought it may be interesting if you play the promo of Pralaya. Mm -hmm. Suprita, can you play the promo, please? That's the wrong one, Akila. That's yeah, sorry. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. while she sets figures that out, okay. we'll uh, okay. let me introduce the artists and then we'll we'll play the promo again. Um, I will first introduce Dr. Eva and Dibia to all of you. It's a very, very interesting uh, profile. Um, descended from a family of artists. 
He began learning Balinese dance and music when he was eight years old. He has studied various forms of classical Balinese dance and drama from different, different masters on the island. From 1970, Dr. Dibia started to experiment with elements of traditional Balinese performing arts mm -hmm. to create new works for contemporary audiences. He has choreographed numerous new dance and dramas and his innovative artworks have gained high recognition and have been featured in many important events and art festivals in Indonesia and across the world. Dr. Dibia has also written a number of books and articles in English and in Indonesian. As a performing artist, he has toured in Asia, Europe, Australia, and the USA. From 1997 to 2002, he served as director of STCI, now ISI, mm -hmm. Dead Pasar. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, Dr. Dibia has recently opened a performing arts space for performance and creati in his creativity in his home village. Mm -hmm. From 1992 to 2002, he worked in collaboration with Keith Terry in California mm -hmm. on cross-cultural projects. From fall 2005 through spring 2007, he was a visiting fellow of Bellini's Performing Arts at the College of Holy Cross, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. to teach Bellini's music and dance. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dibia is also a consultant to the Harriman Museum's exhibition entitled A Bali, Dancing for the Gods. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Dibia. Thank you. Thank you. Dancer, choreographer, teacher, and cultural consultant, Lata Pada is recognized as one of Canada's leading artists and arts advocates. An award-winning artist, she holds the distinction of being the first South Asian artist to receive the prestigious national honor of the Order of Canada in 2009. In January 2011, she was awarded the Pravasi Bharatiya Samman by the President of India. In 2012, she was honored with the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for her contribution to the community as a Canadian citizen. More recently, Lata Pada was inducted into the 2013 inaugural, uh, how do I spell that, ma'am? Which one is that? The, oh. um, I was, I'm a bit confused. Inaugural Missy Soga, is that how it Mrs. is? Mrs. Soga, Mrs. Soga. Soga? Mrs. Soga um, lives in Soga. Soga. It's an, it, Yeah, correct. It's the city that I live in, yes. Okay, mm. Soga's Legends Row, as well as being named one of the most influential individuals of the city of Missy Soga. In 2019, Lataji was conferred by the Lifetime Achievement, conferred with the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Mississauga Arts Council. She's trained under India's eminent gurus, Kalaimamani Kalyana Sundaram and Padma Bhushan, Dr. Kalaniti Narayanan. Originally from Bangalore, India, she's made Canada her home since 1964. She's had an extensive international career as a solo artist, performing in many prestigious festivals and venues. She also holds an MFA in dance from York University and is an adjunct professor in their graduate program. As artistic director of Sampradaya Dance Creations, her choreographic vision is compelled by her desire to redefine Bharatanatyam in the here and now as it navigates new and uncharted territory, resulting in a stunning range of solos, ensemble work, and multidisciplinary productions. Welcome, Dr. Lataji. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Dr. DB, I'm going to start off with you. Yeah. And I firstly want to congratulate you on Padma Shri. Oh, thank you. And I you want to ask that. you, you know, <laughs> a sort of uh, a cliche question, but I really want to ask you, what did you feel when you received the Padma Shri? Well, it's it, the, first, the first word I received from uh, His Excellency, the, uh, the Ambassador of India in Jakarta. I was kind of shaken by the, the word because uh, uh, I never really uh, making something to expect uh, a reward that's, that's very, uh, very prestigious. But as he explained, blah, 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 it's really a great, great honor for me. It is, it's, it's a very uh, blessed kind of a, a word. I believe that is because of the, of, of the power of God Hanuman and the character that I've been playing for for more than 30 years. So maybe that power really uh, lead me to this uh, achievement. And, and, and really, it's really honor for our whole family here in Bali. Yeah. Fantastic. And what an honor for us that you are here to be in conversation with us. Thank you so much again. You're um, welcome. Lataji, you shared 
beautiful note uh, on Dr. Dibya. You know, I want to ask you what your association with him has been like and what in your view really, you know, is uh, makes him an, an artist, um, you know, class apart and a fantastic artist, scholar and choreographer. I have, well, I don't know if many of the uh, people watching this interview know that I have lived in Indonesia for 10 years. <laughs> so it is a country that is very, very dear to me. I speak the language okay. uh, and I do believe that I have a Purva Janma um, mm. connection to Indonesia and mm. particularly to Bali. Mm. So at every opportunity, I go back to Bali. I don't know how many times I've visited it. And I buy every book on uh, Balinese music, dance that I can. And uh, of course, Dr. Vayan Dipia's name comes up in every book <laughs> that is about the dance of Bali. Mm. And I have been dying to meet him for many years. Finally, on one of my trips to Bali, I gathered up enough courage to contact him <laughs> and to meet him. And I found, of course, instinctively that he was a kindred spirit mm -hmm. in, uh, in our interests in dance. And uh, very, very uh, instinctively, we both uh, met. And we met just outside his village home in Singapadu, just mm -hmm. uh, in, outside Ubud in Bali. Mm -hmm. And we talked. We talked for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was that seed. Mm -hmm. uh, that of an artistic idea mm -hmm. to work together. And Dr. Right. Dibya is uh, extremely cautious about <laughs> collaborations. He has worked on many and, uh, you know, he, he doesn't, he's reluctant about getting into conversations about a collaboration. And you can talk right. about that, Dr. Dibya, but yeah. that's how, uh, that's how you, I can... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could you Dr. please, Dibia, please, could you please just call me Dibia. Pak Divya instead of calling me Dr. Divya? It's just too formal. Just call me Pak Divya. Maybe yeah, please. I always call him Pak Divya. <laughs> yeah, because Pak Divya is uh, Pak is uh, Pak. Yeah. Pak. Yeah. Pak is a sign of respect. Pak. I yeah. always call him Pak Divya. So I continue <laughs> yeah. to say that. Now. Just keep doing that. So tell okay. me, okay, okay I'll tell you why you are reluctant about collaborations and why. You, uh, yeah. you were interested in our conversation. Yeah, I mean, you could you could also recall your first meeting with Lataji, and yeah. uh, you know what sort of um, uh, you know because she said that you're reluctant and you're very conscious about uh, your collaborators. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I I know that Bali and India has a long historical kind of relationship, and then uh, our Ramayana Mahabharata a very, very important literature for us here in, in Bali. And thirdly, I've been interested in doing collaboration since uh, mid 1970s. Because for me, working with other artists always give a lot of joy, a lot of challenge, and also uh, a golden opportunity for us to share our, our culture. And for me, when meeting with, with, with Lata, it just, something that I've been, win, I've been waiting for. Because before that, I was uh, uh, doing my collaboration with uh, my uh, uh, partner in America, in Germany, in other part of the world. But when Lata came to me and expressed her interest in and doing collaboration, for me, this is the, the uh, opportunity for me to share the elements of our culture. And from that conversation is really boiling in my mind. This is something that we have to uh, uh, go for uh, in, in order to show to the world that there are many elements of culture between Bali and India can be, can be connected, can be uh, uh, integrated, assimilated like that. And as you can see, the result was, was a very fascinating kind of result. Yeah. And the other thing also, Lata is very keen to, very sensitive in what to do with the collaboration because she's very, very keen to, to some issues that when a collaboration happens, it should be with a mutual respect like that. And she's very keen to that. And for me, 
that is really something making me yeah. really, really looking, uh, looking forward for the uh, process of the collaboration. Absolutely. Uh, you use the word sharing, yeah. right? And I think like such a crucial word in the context of collaboration. Yeah. Uh, Lataji, could you speak about how um, Pralaya really was, um, uh, you know, he talked about mutual respect, right? Uh, you know, I want to understand what is the true spirit of collaboration, right? When two artists from two different, uh, you know, genres sort of decide to come together, then that the spirit of sharing and sharing generously, but also with mutual respect, right? Could you please talk about that? Right. I, I, I think that collaboration is a, a very tricky process and uh, yeah. it has the potential to go off the rails very huh. quickly. Yes. If one does not work mm. with truly that spirit of uh, sensitivity, like Dr. Mm. Uh, Padibia talked about, the respect that mm. one must have for each other's culture, mm. for, mm -hmm. for the collaborator, mm -hmm. and understanding that there is a lot of give and take mm. in, in the process. Yeah. And understanding that the dancers also come from different yeah. movement vocabularies. Mm -hmm. and understanding that you cannot expect them overnight to, mm -hmm. to, to just suddenly adapt yeah. mm -hmm. to the process. Mm -hmm. So it was a long process. It took over, firstly, the two years were just back and forth mm -hmm. between Dr. Uh, Padibia and myself mm -hmm. over phone conversations yeah. and lots and lots of emails mm -hmm. discussing firstly how we, the concept would develop. We yeah. were keen that we did not want Balinese dance and Bharatanatyam to stand yeah. apart, for yeah. one thing. We yeah. wanted true integration yes. in the movement. And as you will mm -hmm. see in the, in the clip, mm -hmm. uh, integration in the movement vocabularies. Mm -hmm. So it meant that when we met in Bali for several weeks, mm -hmm. the Balinese dancers had to learn the elements of Bharat, uh, Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm. And the Bharatanatyam dancers had to learn from Padipia mm -hmm. the, uh, the basic movement vocabulary mm -hmm. of Balinese dance, how mm -hmm. they use their hands, mm -hmm. how they use their head gestures, mm -hmm. what are the basic stances mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the movements. Mm -hmm. Then there was the element of the music. So Praveen Rao came to Bali, mm -hmm. worked there for a couple of weeks, yeah. understanding the music and the rhythms mm -hmm. of Balinese dance he was there in the in the recording studio with the Balinese mm -hmm. musicians, oh. understanding that, and then taking it back to Bangalore and then laying the music, mm -hmm. and then impose, uh, superimposing the Indian instruments over mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, but the process between Padipya and myself was that we were always also the concept was that we did not want to tell the Mahabharata, the episode from the Mahabharata mm -hmm. as is uh, just in a mythological fashion. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be a message mm -hmm. of universal relevance. Yeah. And also most importantly, it had to be of contemporary, mm -hmm. a contemporary message. Mm -hmm. How the universe, or how globally today, yeah. we are continually <clears throat> making the same mistakes. Yeah. And how we are continually, continually trying to uh, not being so uncaring yeah. of the chaos, the destruction, yeah. the enmity, yeah. that we don't learn those lessons from those great myths mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. that have in, you know been celebrated both in Bali, in mm -hmm. Indonesia, yeah. and in India. But myths are there for us to remind us yeah. of those powerful messages. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the, the, most, the most important uh, ideas that we agreed from the very beginning that we are not interested in telling the uh, story like what is said in the literature like that because everyone read it. But we would like to put our interpretation and trying to contextualize the uh, story to the contemporary uh, uh, condition. That also uh, the way for us to prove to the world that traditional story can be contemporizing uh, kind of issues when we work it in that way. So 
Mahabharata really give us a great possibilities of taking elements of it to remind the audience, to remind the world that we are all now creating something that might be bringing us into a pralaya. Yeah. So if we, if we learn from the uh, literature like Ma uh, Mahabharata, so we can stop, we can avoid that happen to us. So that was the kind of message that we would like to convey to the audience. And I'm very happy that Lata from the beginning, let's, let's work on this, what we can tell the audience through this uh, uh, traditional story. And you know, coincidentally, Akila, we toured it in December uh, of uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And shortly mm -hmm. after that, the pandemic hit the world, <laughs> right? and you know the yeah. word pralaya brought on such an ominous reminder mm. of how, yeah. if human beings mess with nature, yeah, that then was the fun. message of pralaya. You it know, it's very, yeah. it's very true. It's very true. It reminds yeah. us. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to talk yeah. about the costumes. You know, Sandhya Raman from yeah, Delhi. Question on we have that. Yeah. I have a question exclusively on the costume. Yeah, oh, I actually okay. wanted to ask okay. you about, um, I actually wanted to ask you, you often say that, um, you know, you bring a contemporary worldview to your art and practice, and you believe that dance expresses a nation's stories, dreams, and collective narratives, and is a tool to investigate identity, society, mm -hmm. and citizenship. I want mm -hmm. to ask you, is Pralaya, in a sense, an extension of that vision? And I want to ask you that when you met Dr. Divya, did you already have an idea of what you wanted and you went looking for a collaborator or did the idea of uh, the Mahabharata itself, did it happen while speaking with him? Only while speaking with him. I just wanted to meet this great writer, scholar. I, the idea of a collaboration only came up in our discussion because I respected him so, so much for his writing. I just wanted to meet him. But in our conversation, and we were sitting at a restaurant that overlooked these beautiful paddy fields, and we were having mee goreng, which is noodles, <laughs> and we were talking for several hours. The concept of a collaboration only came up in our conversation. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't go looking for it. But when yeah. kindred artistic spirits meet together, who yeah. knows what comes up? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I think the heart speaks to, to each other to, to bridge the idea that we have in our, in our head. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Um, I mean, you did mention this, but I want to also want you to also talk about a little more with, you know, with a little more specificity about why is Pralaya especially important in the times that we live in now, right? And why is it imperative? for us to revisit our epics and really make them relevant for our future generations. Could yeah. you talk about that perhaps? Yeah. Yeah. You know that uh, in, our, in our tradition, we all know that we are aware that we are in the last yuga of the four seasons, which is the Kali yuga. With the Kali yuga, as many things is in reverse. So if we are not doing things correctly, if we are keep gambling our nationality, identity, and our, our uh, culture like that, we will go all to the pralaya. So in a way, we are using our, our uh, traditional story, the Mahabharata, part of the uh, uh, dice game, to convey this message. Look, this is what we can see from the old literature when people are gambling everything. So Pralaya coming, which is the Bharata Yuda, the big war. So if we don't want to go that way, so please don't do this kind of gambling because it all will, will be very dangerous to us. So that's the kind of uh, way we, we, we formulate that kind of idea and we inject that kind of idea in our work. Because as you know, performing arts is a form of statement. It's a form mm. of statement. So we would like to state something through yeah. the story and also just to, just to uh, show to the people 
traditional story is not only something about tradition, but it's about contemporary things. Yeah. It's very much depend on how we draw it into the uh, nowadays life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lataji, would you be able to comment on how tradition is in a sense about continuation, right? Uh, could you, and a lot of your productions have been inspired by that idea. Could you speak a little bit about that? Absolutely. You know, uh, I, I do believe that um, we have a tendency to think of mythology uh, as, as being redundant mm -hmm. and, and something that uh, doesn't speak to us today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I feel that mythology has the power mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's, it's imperative that we look to it mm -hmm. for its messages, like Padibya said, mm -hmm. to, hold, to hold us responsible, mm -hmm. to look at it for mm -hmm. the messaging that it, it is eternal. Mm -hmm. It is always relevant. Mm -hmm. And it is how we interpret it, mm -hmm. and it is how we um, negotiate mm -hmm. its meaning mm -hmm. to, to bring relevance to mm -hmm. today. I mean, for example, when we performed it in Indonesia, we performed it in three cities. Mm -hmm. They were all at university audiences. Mm -hmm. And the young people came, it, the audiences were full of young Indonesians. Mm -hmm. And many of them were so taken mm -hmm. by what they saw because mm -hmm. they said, this speaks to us. Mm -hmm. Now we get it. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that our parents and grandparents talked about mm -hmm. the Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. But the way you have portrayed it on this, in the production mm -hmm. speaks to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what we can now go mm -hmm. back and question our grandparents. They came and spoke to us. Their, resi their reactions after the performance <laughs> were overpowering in the way yeah. they came to us yeah. and discussed it with Padibia and yeah. all the artists on the stage. Yeah. And they were so taken by the dancers and yeah. went up to them and said, wow, you were that Duryodhana. You huh. were that Dhritarashtra, I mean, that uh, um, Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira. We can't believe it. Huh. Now we know why you did what you did. Now huh. we understand the power of war. Yeah. Now we understand that. So they, so we understand that yeah. for this generation, yeah. the power of myth is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the work's really making it, it uh, very touching for them because the story really reminds them the dangers of big war when when a big war happened it's 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 so it's so dangerous for everyone so in a way i think uh, those people in indonesia or uh, in india that we talked after the performance really trying to feel more about the message that we convey through our through our, our works akila as you know uh, Lata and I agreed upon the uh, conversation at the end of the performance, yeah, so that we can we can explain our work to the audience, and we managed to do that in every uh, cities that we went to to explain to the local audience, and yeah. that making them really enjoy more even uh, than just watching the production on stage. So. Yeah, understanding the layers, right? Yeah. Lataji, could you tell me where all it has sort of traveled? Uh, in mean, Canada, we had a seven city tour in 2016. Yeah. It premiered in Canada okay. first in yeah. 2016. And then in 2019, three cities in Indonesia and seven cities in uh, India. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention, you know, in Indonesia, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata what? are are living traditions. Yeah. In Bali, yeah. the Mahabharata and Ramayana are performed daily yeah. all over Bali. Yeah. That, you know, in, in traditional formats, yeah. every day in Bali, yeah. every yeah. day. And uh, in, in, in Java, in the Prambanan temple, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Jogjakarta, yeah. and, in, um, 
and in uh, at also in Prambanan and also at in the city of Jog Jakarta. Jog Jakarta, yes. At uh, sometimes in the Kraton, yeah. in the in the, in the Sultan's Palace, yeah. right? They're living traditions yeah. everywhere. So it's interesting, fascinating to see this modern take mm -hmm. on the Mahabharata that people saw in the in the yeah. universities, yeah. and yet the living traditions. And it's such a shame that India, that has such a rich tradition of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, we have kind of lost the the grandeur yeah. of the ballets that we don't yeah. see. Right. You know, yeah. but it's fantastic to see this in Bali. I know I'm making a pitch for tourism Bali and tourism <laughs> Indonesia. Well, no, no, this is this is true that uh, in in Bali, Ramayana and Mahabharata is not just literature for people to yeah. perform, but it is itihasa. It's a it's a sacred kind of books, and they they pull elements of the story and then utilize it to explain the religious message of the event where they they uh, uh, perform the Ramayana or Mahabharata. Because in Bali, we have a tradition of reciting the poem and uh, the uh, the cantos of the uh, Mahabharata or Ramayana in the form of kakawin. So they sing it and then translate the word and that making it really a living tradition. Yeah, even for a small ceremony in the family housing, they read lines of Mahabharata or Ramayana and feel the, the message to be conveyed to those who attended the uh, ceremony. Right. Yeah. It, it right. was that making them, uh, um, the audience at the uh, university, very fascinated by seeing how contemporary it can be compared to the traditional kind of uh, way of presenting the elements of the story. So for me and Lata, it's really a great, a great pleasure for us to show the two dimensions of the uh, mythology, like the traditional way and the contemporary ways. Yeah. Because in the production, uh, Padibya actually sings uh, in traditional Balinese. He actually recites Mm -hmm. uh, parts of the Mahabharata, and he comes on stage as Vyasa. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, you can notice in the in the fuller production, mm -hmm. you'll see in the projected background uh, there is uh, the, the scriptures yeah. uh, being written, which in Bali is as close to Pali, right? Mm -hmm. Padibia. Yeah. Yes. Close to Pali. To yeah. Pali. Yeah. This, right. Yeah. I want to ask you if the response that you receive from audiences in Canada, Indonesia, and India, were they different? I mean, did different audiences by virtue of engaging with the epics differently, did they respond differently to the uh, work as well? This is just like- I'm just Well, I, if I may say, the, the same response is that is the surprise of the audience. Oh. The, su the surprise of the audience, they never think there will be such a dialogue between right. Bharat Natyam and classical Balinese dance on stage, where people no longer identify, oh, this is Balinese dance, it is Bharat Natyam. It's all blended like that. Right. So we receive this kind of response, both in Canada and India, and later in Indonesia. For me, this proof that our collaboration really uh, works for, for that. Because we, from the beginning, we have decided that we are not going to just cut and paste yeah. elements of Bharat Natyam and uh, Balinese dance, but we would like to have it blended. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting for the uh, dancer as well to move in that way. So they really feel Balinese dancer, feel the Bharat Natyam in their body and, and, and vice versa. And I think that one, one similarities of the uh, Respond of the audience that we got, and in Indonesia, and they are interested in in the story, especially the uh, dimension and the story that we pull into the production. Yeah, in India we got also a kind of a strange story when we perform. Lata, please correct me. Maybe in Bangalore, we receive a very hard kind of question about how would you like to present a long story only for that uh, short kind of uh, time. So 
in in a way i understand because this uh, man are very keen to to the complete story of the uh, mahabharata but no, at the no. time i was kind of trying to to answer we are not telling you about the mahabharata story but yeah. we are pulling one elements one message to the story and to convey to the audience yes so it is yeah. not my intention to tell you everything in one hour yeah, yeah. but just one episode or one act of the of the story Absolutely. and then convey but, to the audience so it's also immersive both for uh, the artist and for the yeah. audience right it's yeah. immersive yeah. in a certain way because of its yeah, yeah. absolutely yes. the medium is the message almost right yeah, yeah. Uh, lata ji i just learned actually just uh, in this conversation that you had lived in indonesia for 10 years i had no idea so uh, my question is probably uh, not going to make sense but i'm going to ask you that by virtue of living in, in indonesia and you said you speak the local language as well did you obviously engage with uh, balinese dance Uh, really closely so did you have a good understanding of it so when you met uh, dr divya you probably had a sense of the dance form right um so did that make the process a little easy and i want to ask dr divya if he knew what was his relationship with bharatanatyam you know so if you could answer um, that first and then we could have him respond to that well, well i i did not live in bali i did okay. i actually lived on a very remote island sulawesi mm -hmm. um which is north of bali mm -hmm. and i lived on a remote uh, part of sulawesi also so not in the metropolis of jakarta or uh, <laughs> surabaya or makassar uh, we were on a mining uh, project and this was from 1969 to 1979 so many many decades before i met dr debia but i learned to speak the language very well mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> but i had learned elements of balinese uh, mm. uh dance from uh, a doctor's wife mm. um and uh, who was balinese and she was teaching balinese dance so it was very elementary very mm. elementary mm. not in the academic fashion of padibia's mm. books and things like that but i had started to read those books at that time no so when i met uh, padibia uh, i i can say very honestly that i did not know much about mm. yeah you know the deeper aspects of balinese yeah. dance mm. but i gradually came to learn it along with the dancers when he was teaching it mm -hmm. right right what about you dr divya did you what was your what is your relationship with bharatanatyam how how much did you know about well, bharatanatyam <laughs> you know i must say when i was at at ucla I took some uh, Bharatanatyam classes with uh, uh, Medayo, my teacher. So it's give me a, a very elementary kind of uh, introduction to the yeah. form, and that making me aware of what to do when in the future I have a chance to work with with uh, Indian dancers to combine with Balinese dance, because right. it's give me a good lesson. how the indian dancers using their mudra in a very fixed so called uh, a kind of vocabulary with 30 something kind of mudras uh, you have to execute it when when you dance but uh, uh, in in opposite to bali the hand movement is a free hand movement mm -hmm. so it was that's the kind of challenge for me uh, with alata how to remind our dancers Mm -hmm. Balinese dancer must be able also to copy some of the mudra that's executed in the in the form at the same time also Bharatanatyam dancer uh, I ask them to free their hand sometime so then the hand will be more flowing so it was that kind of a dialogue making mm -hmm. them feel like oh this is the different this is the different between Balinese and, and Bharatanatyam and when when they all feel it they can express it freely and openly making those movement become their own movement and for us watching that kind of a change is a great a great pleasure for to see that fantastic yeah. you know i'm i'm really thinking about you know you talked to me that it premiered in 2016 right mm -hmm. and so you obviously started working on it well before 
you know, I was just thinking that this was probably in 2013 and 14 when we were probably not like Zoom hadn't probably made it. Oh, no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm just thinking about how uh, logistically it must have been so uh, tough and definitely like to, to sort of persevere through such a, you know, fantastic idea with musician in Bangalore and like, uh, you know, dancers from across the world and um, different energies coming together. It's really a different kind of, uh, I mean, as creative artists, do you yes. believe that you need a different kind of an endurance to sort of see something like this through? I guess our 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 first meeting, Mick has to, to build this kind of confidence that right. things can be done. Right. And then on the long process of the pralaya, Mm -hmm. I must say, Lata very active to share and to call me, to send me email, and I respond on that. And it was kind of, uh, that's communication, making it easier to formulate our idea and to share part that we still doubting that will, will work for our works. And, and, and even though with no Zoom, but at a time it was good enough uh, for us to communicate to each other, even though we are miles of uh, a thousand of miles away, but right, right. but uh, the idea from the beginning already flowing to our head, so that making it easier. It would be different yeah. story if there is no agreement. Right. So just to make the yeah. agreement will take yeah. a long time, but because during our first meeting, it's already connected like that. Uh, so what uh, happening the rest? It's just it look, just look, yeah, making look. it supper and then and then cleaner. Yeah. No, Akila, the, the thing is Padibi and I were the primary collaborators, but there were so many other collaborators that were part of it that were getting uh, you know brought into the production. For example, we had our uh, visual design collaborator, mm -hmm. Jacques Collin, mm -hmm. who is in Quebec City, who has worked with us on many productions. So he was ideating uh, mm -hmm. all the visual design that we were sending to him. And uh, <clears throat> so he was another collaborator that I had to constantly send notes on the production. He was designing the production, uh, the visuals of the production. At the same time, Jasmine Savant was doing the uh -huh. play script because there's a recorded play script uh, through the uh, the production. So she was writing the play script. Mm -hmm. Then there was Sandhya Raman who was doing the costumes mm -hmm. and she decided that she would like to work with Balinese Ikat mm -hmm. because Ikat is a common tradition between mm -hmm. India and Bali. So mm -hmm. the, she, while I was in Bali, we were exchanging sample designs and um, through uh, yeah, it was FaceTime. I don't mm -hmm. think WhatsApp was so prevalent at that time. So all that had to be coordinated mm -hmm. and then shipped to Sandhya Raman. And mm -hmm. then there was our lighting design. Mm -hmm. Okay, by Arun Srinivasan here in Toronto. He was involved in it. And um, who else? And yeah. for our tour, of course, yeah. in India, it was, uh, uh, in India, it was Deepa Dharma. Adhikari yeah. who, from Delhi, who was our lighting design. So we had the script, we had the costume, we had the visual design, and, and I told you about Ali Rao, who did the music, and then we had Pashwanath Adi, uh, Upadhyay and Aditya from Bangalore. We had Otri Nandi and uh, Nitya Garg from Toronto, my dancers, and then Padibia's four Balinese dancers from, from yeah. Bali. Yeah. So there were so many moving parts yeah. to this whole production, you yeah. know, to wow. get together, and the various grants that we had to write to for mm -hmm. touring across Canada, and then our international grants that we had to write to mm -hmm. to tour to Bali, uh, to Indonesia, and to yeah. India. So yeah. this is a major, major yeah. undertaking. Major yeah, I yeah. I should say also that in Bali. I also work with uh, with uh, uh, puppet makers because the puppet must must be modified. Right. It's it's enlarged, uh, larger than than the normal size. Right. And also 
our two masks, the mask for Biasa and Ganesa, yeah, yeah, I yeah. make it special order from a, a great mask maker, Ido Bagus Alit, making it really uh, into the mask that I, I want to. It's not traditional, but it's somehow giving you a form of traditional mask. Right. Wow, absolutely. Um, uh, Lataji, you wanted to speak about the costume, right? Yes. Yeah, but yes, that I think we so, could play the we could attempt to play the promo. Please here. do, please yeah. do. Yes, um, yes. We're having some technical issues, but hopefully we'll get it right this time. So, Prita, could you play a, the promo, please? Ah, uh, yeah, this is okay. Mm -hmm. Could we speak about the costumes, please? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so we were working with Sandhya Raman, a costume designer from Delhi. Uh, and she uh, uh, felt that she would like to work with Ikat uh, from Bali. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ikat is stunning from Bali. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why she chose that was because Ikat is... Uh, of course, she felt that Ikat had traveled to Bali mm -hmm. and to the rest of Indonesia from Orissa mm -hmm. because uh, the trade routes had taken Ikat uh, to uh, Indonesia from the Orissa region. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I happened to also be in Bali at that time while we were creating. This is in 2016 when yeah. we were creating Bali for the first time, uh, Pralaya for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I sourced Ikat in all the markets of Bali and, uh, and took pictures and FaceTimed and she loved it. So she said, I want this, I want this, I want this. But she had decided that we would go with uh, uh, gender neutral costumes um, right. so that, uh, and they would, um, facilitate uh, movement that mm -hmm. would be appropriate for both Balinese and mm -hmm. Bharatanatyam movements. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would have various layers that would come and be taken off for different sections of it that would add on and take off. Mm -hmm. And um, fascinating designs. I mean, she That's just was so brilliant mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the way she imagined it. And was so organized, and she said, I want so many meters of this, so many meters of this, mm -hmm. and designed Padivya's costume. And uh, it, it, that's how she designed it, and detailed measurements were sent, and mm -hmm. that's how she worked on it. And her drawings are, are just a work of art in, in themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what they were, and they lasted right through for even the uh, India and Indonesia tour. Her fabrics are just beautiful. 
Uh, yes. I mean, the, the basic yeah. cost over which she laid. Yeah, the I mean, with, based on what we're yeah. seeing, it was gorgeous. Yeah, uh, again. I want to ask you a little bit about masks mm -hmm. and how masks become really uh, powerful symbols, right? Uh, yeah. Could you just, uh, with reference to Pralaya, could you just talk a little bit about the way you've used the masks? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I, I come from a family where my father was a great mask uh, dancer. So I learned how to, you, to manipulate masks uh, since I was young. So in a way, mass is part of my, has been part of my life. Yeah. So seeing some of the scene in the Paralaya, I believe that there is a, 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 a space for using mass. So like uh, uh, Ganesha, hmm. yeah, Ganesh is, is one way because we're going to set it with, with Lata. There's a way uh, uh, where I will put the, the mask on as Ganesha. And then on the next scenes, Lata herself uh, uh, act as, as Ganesha but I, I play uh, 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 Vyasa. So okay. as, as you can see, yeah, this is- I was telling Ganesha the story of Mahabharata <laughs> and Ganesha is the scribe and yeah. taking down. Yeah, <laughs> and this is, this is the mass. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah. the mass of Vyasa is with me and Ganesha with Lata. <laughs> right, fabulous. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just want I just want to ask you one uh, final question. Maybe you could also talk about the music, Lataji, before I ask you the last question. Is there anything specific that you want to talk about the soundscape of Pralaya itself? Well, the entire soundscape was created by Praveen Rao, right. uh, who's from Bangalore, a very, very brilliant. Uh, I think he's watching. Yeah, yeah. I must with. say, how much I enjoy working with him when he was in Bali. Right. And the one thing that I must say, the process of making the music, a long distance kind of process, we were rehearsing in Toronto, and then we had to fix our music and send it to, to Provin in Bangalore, and just uh, the next day is ready. So for me, this is really something that I learned how technology can quicken the, uh, the uh, process. But I think on top of it is the, the, uh, the, uh, the sensitivity of Bravin in catching the elements of Balladin music, because when he put it together, it's really blended. Again, the idea of the blending idea is not only from us uh, to uh, the dancer, but also from the musician, from the costume maker, yeah, and also from the uh, uh, video designer. So it just happened like that, and we all came the same, uh, uh, the same idea, and and moving together in that kind of concept. Right, lovely. Uh, did you want to add something, Latachi, or no? As I said earlier, uh, Prabhim. I've worked with on many, many projects. So he's my go-to person for all my productions. Uh, I mean, most of my productions. He um, came to Bali for 10 days, 12 days, yeah. Yeah. and watched the rehearsals, understood what our needs were from scene to scene, mm -hmm. and then uh, spoke to uh, Padibia on all the rehearsals. What are the tonal effects, uh, mm -hmm. tonal sounds between yeah. Balinese music and, uh, then was in the recording studio, went back to Bali. And then as Padibia said, even when we were in rehearsal, uh, he knew how to adjust the music mm -hmm. for each scene uh, in the, in back in Bang, uh, Bangalore and then mm -hmm. sent it back. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it was a constant adjusting yeah. of the rehearsal to keep the production within the 70 minutes mm -hmm. uh, that we were very keen would be a uh, uh, non-stop without intermission production for right. the seven minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it is not easy. It is not easy for a long production like that, not giving the audience uh, time to, to break, but uh, but it works. It works to keep them like 70 minutes just to sit it, and to yeah, watch. Immersed, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just have one final question before we wrap. I think we're almost an hour into the conversation. 
um i just want to ask you like just the just the way the epic is constantly revisited and we sort of unravel uh mm -hmm. like layers of like mm -hmm. possibilities right yeah. uh, do you sometimes think look at pralaya and think that okay i could have done this maybe we need to do this do you feel that the production itself uh lends itself uh, has been structured in a way that yeah. it has possibilities of being like yeah. revisiting it maybe 10 years later do you yeah. think be able to if you looked at it with a fresh pair of eyes do you feel that i'm just like thinking not, aloud and asking this question not waiting for 10 years even <laughs> our production in canada and when we went to india we uh, lata and i decided to make some kind of change to make it more, uh, working for the local audience and for uh to tighten the uh, the production it's really when we agree on one concept basic concept it's very easy for us to 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 work on that because the base of our agreement is there and now just the detail how to cut and how to add and how to change certain part of the uh, uh production that was happened during our our tour to india and when you yeah. see this two production even the same pralaya but they are part of it a little bit different do you think yeah, that i agree we did make several changes yeah. from the 2016 version yeah. yeah yeah right okay um i just there's just one question uh from uh, geeta rao and she says um what are your comments on pralaya and the recent pandemic mm -hmm. i suppose she means like in a certain way I think you mentioned that, right? That yeah, I think Lata just, already mentioned it earlier. Yeah, yes, we talked about it. It How was, was a, it? a foretelling of uh, what was the 2019 tour was almost ominous and foretelling mm -hmm. of the pralaya of the pandemic that mm -hmm. was to follow yes. shortly after. Yes. Right. What yeah. What are your plans for pralaya? Like, do you intend to hopefully, fingers crossed? I mean, would you like to travel with it again? Bring it to India? um other parts of the world are you uh, thinking about it i mean or are we just waiting for the pandemic to sort of oh yeah of course first we have to wait for the uh, uh, situation of the pandemic and after that we really want to to share this work with yeah. the rest of the world because it's 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 about culture exchange it's about cultural uh, kind of a, a collaboration that mm. we supposed to do it more and more in order to be able to understand our culture and mm -hmm. to see the bridge they're Absolutely. connecting our two cultures and i think Absolutely. if we can do that like this and encourage people to move to move toward this kind of direction i think this pralaya will not only speak about pralaya but about the cultural kind of uh, uh, integration beautiful that's a, such a fantastic point dr dibya thank you so much uh, Sanji, thank you so much for um, you know i'm so glad you shared that post and it gave us this idea to have this conversation i have learned so much about pralaya and i can't wait to see it we didn't get to see it in chennai so yeah. um hopefully uh, pralaya will come to chennai and we will all yeah. witness it um, yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for taking time off yeah thank you akila thank you for thank you, this for having us here thank, thank you very pretty who tuned in and watched this conversation um we will be uh, sharing images uh, from pralaya tomorrow and we will also be uploading this conversation on our youtube uh, page so you can all go watch it there or you can definitely watch it on facebook as well yeah. um thank you very much to everybody who oh, logged in from yeah, different parts of the world um have thank a good you. day lata ji and good night uh, dr divya thank you thank bye you thank you yeah thank, thank you akila bye bye yeah. bye lata bye bye pa divya salam